All right. Oh, welcome everybody. I realize we're in like the first slot here, which is it's kind of interesting. So, yeah, it's good. I'm excited to get started. So, uh, as he said, yeah, Phil's not going to be here today. Um, he's in Valencia, but he, he can't be here today, unfortunately. Um, he might be on the on the virtual platform somewhere. So, hi, Phil. Um, so today we're going to kind of give an introduction to ContainerD, go through its, its architecture, um, and it's kind of where the project has been in the last year or since the last last KubeCon. Um, so if there's other ContainerD talks at KubeCon, um, so I I recommend you know like the first one we have from Akihiro, another ContainerD uh, maintainer, should be really interesting. Um, and Anusha also has a talk that's going to be covering ContainerD as well. Uh, both of those tomorrow. So I'm going to start off with kind of where container D has been in the last year. Um, we've, we've seen kind of tremendous growth in the project. A lot of that is going to be seen from uh, Kubernetes uh, 1.24. We finally saw the, the deprecation and removal of the Docker shim, which has brought a lot of people. Thank you. Is that Dims right there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, yeah, you can thank Dims for that. He's worked hard on that. Um, but that is, that's really driven a lot of people to ContainerD. And luckily, like what we've seen is even though the number of users has gone way up, um, the, the project itself hasn't seen a lot of issues. People seem to have uh, had a pretty good experience moving to ContainerD. So if you haven't already, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're thinking about it uh, as a, it's, well, you have to at some point, really. Um, and then as well as, as, as NerdCuddle. So, I don't know how many of you are using NerdCuddle today. It's, it's a pretty new tool um, developed by, uh, originally by Akihiro. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uptick uh, in that and usage. Uh, it's driving a lot of users to ContainerD. And it's really, it's, it's, it's a pretty amazing project. Uh, you, should, you should check it out if you, if you haven't already. Um, we have also have some new maintainers uh, that have joined since last KubeCon. Um, so uh, we have Kazu as our new committer, and then we also added Mike and, and Danny as, as reviewers. So one thing about our project and where we're at, we could always use documentation improvements, um, especially as we have a lot of users coming in. Uh, this is a great opportunity for those who want to contribute, and you're not quite sure how to contribute. Um, it's understandable that contributing to a code base like ContainerD is kind of hard to get started, um, but you know, each of you are going through your own journey. Um, whether it's just switching to ContainerD from, from Docker, or you're switching, or you're just uh, starting fresh. Um, when you get frustrated, or you hit those little snags, like, like it, it, it's good to, to come to the maintainers and, and help us fix that, cause, uh, so that we can fix that for others in the future. So I, I put this up here. This is, this is one of the common questions that get asked is about uh, mirroring for uh, container D, how do you configure it and stuff. So y you can go into our, in our docs and look at it. Um, we don't have this information. I, I, th I think our website's not really updated very well, but uh, when in doubt, go to our source code. There's a docs directory that has quite a bit of information uh, where you can find, that, uh, find those. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what supported today in terms of container D releases. Um, so we just end of life 1.4. Uh, a few months ago. Um, 1.6 we also released back in, in February. Uh, 1.5 is is been our, our stable branch for a little while. Uh, we're trying to move users on to, to 1.6 as we can. Uh, so 1.6 is probably going to be our longer supported uh, release time. Um, so it was is in February. Um, we have this extended support time period that we're probably going to extend uh, quite a bit for 1.6. So we don't have long-term releases, but the way we tend to, to end-of-life things is when the community is ready. So um, that's, that's another area where if, if you're a user and you see something and you're like, that can't happen, you know, come to maintainers and, and we'll listen to you about that. And 1.7 is, is on the horizon. I'm going to talk a little bit about 1.7 in a bit. Um, so if you're a Kubernetes user, you probably care a lot about which version of ContainerD should I be using. Uh, we have this in our releases document in the root of our, in our repo. Um, so this graph kind of represents what's been tested, not necessarily what's going to work for you. 
Uh, like we always recommend trying to use the latest if it if if you can, um, or it's it's always good to to use the latest. Um, but this this kind of falls along the Kubernetes support cycle because Kubernetes doesn't support that many releases. I think it's like four, three or four at a time. Um, so we tend to support our our releases tend to live a little longer than that. Uh, so 1.5 is going to be supported for pretty much every version of Kubernetes out there today. Uh, 1.6 we've tested with 1.2.3 and later, um, and all of the new ones are going to be on 1.6 for a while. So, so I'm going to talk a little bit about where we're going with Containerd 1.7. Um, unlike some of our, our previous releases, uh, 1.7 is actually we're developing a lot of features for it. And this is one of the reasons why I say 1.6 is probably going to be a longer support cycle, because many of you don't want features. And that's understandable. Like, you just want the runtime. You don't really want to worry about what's, you know, what's hot and what's, what's cool in, in your container runtime. Uh, you just want it to be boring. And uh, it is boring, but there's also stuff we're trying to add uh, to make it easier for the maintainers and to make it easier uh, so that we can be more extensible uh, as a project. Uh, so one of the things that one of the first things we've been developing is this the sandbox service and API. Um, one of the major uses of Container D over the past few years has actually been focusing more on VM environments and yeah, containers, VMs, whatever. Like uh, you're used, like they're using Containerd to, to manage those. And so we're trying to inc in improve our interfaces uh, around how those are managed, because VMs and containers, they're, they're not exactly the same. They have some different requirements or uh, different abilities that, that you can do, and you want to be able to leverage from different parts of the stack. Um, and then some of these other components, most of these are actually, <laughs> they'll, they'll go along a common theme. Um, but so the image transfer service is, uh, our way of improving the way we do pull and push in Containerd. Uh, so right now we have kind of a, a fat client approach where we're doing everything, but we want to actually have a nice service that, that we can develop against. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and then some of the other things, they're all, 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 a lot of them are along the line of trying to clean up how, we're, how we do stuff internally, um, especially how we have our, our CRI plugin today. Uh, so this is what the architecture of Containerd ends up looking like. Um, it's an eye chart. Don't try to memorize it. Uh, I'm going to go through the different parts. Um, I'll highlight kind of some of those things that I mentioned that's new in, in 1.7. So we have these new transfer service APIs. We have box, uh, new, new stuff for sandboxes. Um, we have some new stuff in our API layer that we're working on. Um, but everything else is stable and stays the same. We're trying to add stuff in a very backward compatible way. Um, so I mentioned the Containerd client. It's, it's kind of fat today. Like there's, there's a lot of functionality that lives in, inside our client. Um, all the image management that is pull, push, import, export um, that, that you're familiar with, everything related to actually creating the container, creating the, the OCI specifications is actually done inside of our client. Um, the way we have developed it is we have a bunch of service APIs, and the client uses those same service APIs, and then we have a service proxy. Um, it's actually going to go over gRPC uh, to Containerd. Um, then in the actual daemon, we kind of broke it out into the four different parts. We have the API. The API is going to be gRPC today, um, but we're also looking into supporting TTRPC um, more, more at this layer. Um, these have all of our service definitions, all our service APIs. Um, CRI as well um, is an API that, that we support at this layer. In the core of Containerd, we have all of our, these are all of our core services. Um, they all have their own uh, API uh, for, or more like they, they each have their own like Go, uh, Go interface that, that the rest of the components can interact with. Uh, some of them are stateless, some of them actually store metadata. Uh, we, we store all our metadata together. Um, the reason we do that is because we nicely namespace and we garbage collect things so that, uh, say, you delete an image, it can delete all the stuff related to it, or you delete a container, uh, it can go ahead and delete all the resources without you having to, to try to track those yourself as the client. So the back end is where 
Uh, we're going to have the solid implementations of stuff like the snapshotters. We have like the overlay snapshotter that's actually going to handle the on-disk storage uh, of our snapshots. Uh, we have our content store. Our content store is actually what stores all the blobs and stuff that we get from the registry, sort of artifact that, that you create along the way. So if you're like build kit, you're building something, you might store something in the content store and push it up to a registry. Um, and then we have our, our runtime backends. Um, these are what manage all of the actual container processes, the sandboxes, and uh, all the tasks that are running. And we focus a lot on pluggability in Containerd. Uh, so we try to add as many plugin interfaces as we can. Um, in fact, pretty much every box and circle that you see here um, is itself designed. Hear me? Okay. All right, we're back. Um, so any of the boxes here, everything is des designed around having uh, using our plugin interface. So CRI itself is actually written as a plugin that uses every other plugin in uh, Containerd. Um, we have metrics as something that that plugged in. Uh, I also have a few spots here where we have uh, snapshotters, content stores that can be plugged in. So you'll see this quite a bit. There's other implementation of snapshotters. So a common one that's, that's become very popular is the StarGZ snapshotter, which gives you the ability to actually do lazy, uh, lazy loading of images. Um, we have some, some plugins like run the runtime, which can actually restart your containers for you. And, and our shim layer is what actually manages uh, the container process. So think of the shim as what's going to parent your container, and it's going to it's kind of like it's babysitting it. It's, 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 it's working on behalf of Containerd to watch the container, um, track exits and status, and uh, handle everything, uh, handle all of that. Uses a TTRPC API for Containerd to actually communicate to the shim. Uh, so we try to make this layer as, as thin and lightweight as possible because this is going to be on a per uh, container or a per sandbox. Um, instance of the, of the shim that we have today. This also gives us the ability to restart or upgrade Containerd without actually uh, taking down all of your containers. Uh, so let's go through what a container run is going to look like in Containerd. So it's a little small. So let me, let me I'll describe what, what we have in the, in the five boxes. We have the, the client on the left, and we have a snapshotter service, container service, task service, um, and then our actual shim. Uh, the first thing that's going to happen is the client's going to actually set up the snapshot that's used uh, for the container. So this is going to uh, have the, uh, the actual root file system. It's going to set up the root file system that the container is going to use. We're going to go to the container service. We're going to create that container. Um, and now we're going to go to the task service. And we're actually going to run a task. Um, in in Containerd, we keep them separate. The container is the object. The metadata object, the, the task is the actual instance of, of your, your, container, your contained process. Um, the task service is actually what's going to be responsible for creating that shim. Um, it's going to do it via an exec. Um, and then a, a new shim process will be created. And then the task service will actually create that process and return back the container ID and the PID back to the client. Um, at this point, the clients usually wait. They'll send a wait call, uh, wait for the container to finish, and then they'll start the container. Um, during while the container is running, um, the client is doing nothing but waiting. As soon as that that uh, process exits, the shim is going to return back with the exit status. We'll go back to the client. Then the client can do all the cleanup. We'll delete it. Um, shut shut down. Um, we'll delete it. The task service will actually shut down the shim when it's done, um, and then we can go ahead and clean up other resources such as deleting the container and snapshots. So the transfer service is one of the new things that's being worked on. Um, so it's, it's, an, it's another stateless service. It's what's actually handling um, doing a pull operation. But uh, previously, the pull operation was done client side. Um, the transfer service is actually adding a service into Containerd. Uh, while the, why this is significant is you can see, for example, the, the CRI plugin has its own instance or its own implementation of doing image pull. Uh, nerd cut we we'll use the client. So we, we have multiple implementations of this. It's, it's, really, it's really difficult to configure. 
this working? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's easier to, um, we want to put everything together, have one place where we can actually do the configuration uh, and give a better experience back to the client and as well as for, for CRI. Um, we have common libraries for actually doing the image distribution uh, part of it. So everything that's related to transfer, um, the actual transfer implementations and the resolvers, authentication, stuff like that. So with the transfer service, um, the process is going to look a little different. The client's going to make a request to the Container D API. It's going to say, hey, transfer from this registry uh, to local storage. Uh, the transfer service is going to talk to the registry. Uh, registry is going to say, hey, you need to authorize. Um, we're building a way in. And this is kind of the complicated part why we haven't added it before, is we're adding a way in for the transfer service to go back to the client hey, I, I need credentials, um, and uh, the client can actually send those credentials back up to the transfer service. Um, and that's, that's really important to us because we're, we're very strict about we do not store credentials in Containerd. Like our metadata store will not store credentials. Um, Kubernetes provides them. Clients provide them. Um, you have a plugin that provides them. You can provide them in, in any sort of way except from our metadata database. Um, and at that point, the transfer service back to the register, resolve the image, and return uh, back the image digest. Yes, yeah, is, is it cutting out on? OK. So um, the transfer service was actually going to be responsible for handling the poll flow. Um, so we, we use image handlers to do that. So think of it as the image handlers are responsible for figuring out what are the artifacts that are related to this image. Um, so it's, it's going to fetch each of the artifacts that it's needed and the order that it's needed. So usually that's going to be a, a manifest, and then it's, gonna, it's going to pull an image configuration, and then all the image layers. Um, it's going to do that one by one, and then it's going to return the progress back to the client um, so you can know what's going and, and where it is in the process. Um, afterwards, it's going to complete the unpack and, and store the image. Um, and that's it. The client will get a response that the transfer has succeeded. Um, there's much less that the, the client will, will need to do there. Um, now, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I, I mentioned some stuff that's in CRI today, and we're trying to break it up a little bit um, into different services. Uh, so for example, when you do sandbox creation today, um, this box here that says pod sandbox, it's, it's the same size as everything else, but it's, it's actually much bigger. <laughs> it does a lot of stuff in there uh, for managing uh, these sandboxes. Obviously, it's like uh, all the logic around a pod is pretty large, and uh, managing, creating the, the sandbox and the uh, containers for it, um, there's, there's a lot involved in, the, in that process. Uh, so we're trying to add these new interfaces to make it easier, not just to create the sandbox and create uh, new interfaces, but actually this will give us an option to do stuff from the client and as well as from, from other plugins. So I talked about working on a CRI v2 plugin. Um, you can think of a CRI v2 plugin as a simpler implementation that can leverage these, these services. Um, and there's different parts of the stack. Uh, everything is pretty layered in Containerd. We'll have services, we'll have metadata, uh, we'll have backend implementations. Um, there is implementation here on the shim side. Um, that's mostly been completed. Um, this will give us uh, some ability, for example, to move the pause logic down into the shim. Um, it's being worked on. And then I, I mentioned before kind of this TTRPC work and proxy. So uh, one, of the, one of the things that we're, that we're working on right now as well to enable this is by defining these new services and these new service uh, APIs, we're actually able to move logic into the shim when that's needed. Uh, when it's not needed, you can use the local services, but in the cases such as um, uh, with confidential computing or some of the other uh, use cases that, that are being worked on, uh, more logic is actually wanted by some shims. Not all of them. For the most case, you're running a container. You want it thin. We keep it thin. Um, but we want to have options, uh, which we try to design things for. You can, you can implement whatever you need for your use case using our APIs. Um, so this proxy basically en enables the ability to actually use a, uh, another implementation of the service that could be implemented uh, by the shim. So 
if you think of how I demonstrated the poll earlier, uh, we're going to have a poll that's going to go to the Container D API, which is going to go to our local service implementation. Um, with the proxy implementation, you can think of it as the Container e Container D API is actually going to forward that request directly into the Shim API, and the Shim can handle whatever it needs to um, to uh, implement that interface and return it back to the client. So from the client's perspective, um, it doesn't have to do stuff like go around Container D to talk to Shims or um, try to understand too much about like what what implements different parts. Uh, we can handle that uh, kind of transparently uh, to the, the client, so they don't have to they don't have to see that. All right, I'm going to go back to the overview slide, and uh, that's all that's all that I have today. Um, just a reminder of when the talks are uh, the other Container D talks that I recommend. Um, there's also a, I mentioned confidential computing. There's a con confidential com confidential computing talk today at three three twenty five. Um, so don't miss that either. <laughs> All right. Uh, can do some questions.